All right, ladies and gentlemen, hard act to follow here. We're going to be having a panel discussion, and it's called The Distortion of History of World War II. The moderator of this discussion will be Mr. Makovsky. Professor Andrzej Kaminski is not with us, unfortunately. Albert Trujillo is here, founder and president of the Polish-Spanish Historical and Cultural Association, Poland First to Fight, and Stefan Komar is going to join us. He's the son of a Warsaw Uprising insurgent whose battalion, Zoshka, was awarded the Righteous Among Nations Medal for Liberating Genshufka Concentration Camp in Cap Poland's capital. Stefan Komar has been fighting for years against historical false, historically false and offensive term like Polish death camps, amongst, other, amongst others as a member of the Polish Media Issues Group. Gentlemen. Good morning. Nice to see you. Please. Let me get my book out. We're going to have, unfortunately, very short, but I guess very intensive discussion. Let me start from the very basic question, but every, each, every one of you have a different perspective to that question. How from your field of interest, your field of work, your experience, you're going to fight, and how can you fight with those kind of distortions of the Polish history, of the historical facts, uh, from the institutional perspective, as Professor Berend, to media uh, perspective, of, as Mr. Uh, Komar uh, is working on. So let's just answer quickly uh, from my left hand uh, to the last uh, participant. How, from your personal experience, in your field of interest, can you fight with those kind of things that we saw on that presentation? Professor Berend. Uh, shortly, uh, using uh, means uh, that we possess in institution, on, in different kinds of institution, we we have to be, we are to be both uh, uh, active and reactive. Active, uh, it means to use all uh, tools uh, available to present uh, the true story of the past among others about the Second World War and experience of the Polish society during uh, the war with exhibitions, like, uh, uh, books, uh, uh, theater performances, also computer games. Yes, with using of a true picture of, uh, of the past. On the other way, of course, uh, we uh, face uh, falsification, distortions, lies, even lies. So uh, we are to uh, show what is wrong with the story, the narrative about uh, the past. Uh, we are lucky now to have uh, means, money, institution, manpower to act uh, both ways, just now. Okay, thank you. You have your microphone there. You have this. No, there, yeah, that's yeah. speaking, but briefly. Okay, yeah, I am, in, in great extent, I, I am, uh, I agree with Professor Berend. So, uh, all means have to be used, and uh, institutional, and also uh, educational, and, and trying to, to use also the, the most um, popul the popular culture to, to, to approach this, this, pro this problem. So movies, uh, games, but of course all, all of that requires money. Professor Kristina Zamorska. Thank you. Um, so uh, from my perspective as a Polish American um, and an academic and a, uh, activist, um, I see that um, we went from, some of this is mistakes, uh, ignorance, but some of it is intentional activism. And I, um, I, I some, someone like Bra Gra Professor Grabowski, uh, Gross, and this unfortunate and deliberate focus on World War II as Polish-Jewish relations is itself a distortion, because we talk about the genocide uh, without the war. So we, we need to point out 
in our work, in our writing, in conferences, that the genocide happened in the context of the war. And uh, there's also, so I define people like Grabowski, um, academic activists, and, they, and unfortunately it's common. Uh, intentional um, focus, ethno, it's ethnocentric and biased. Uh, and it should be pointed out and challenged. And I do that in my work. I react, I go to conferences, I, um, I react to faulty um, articles. We pass things around as a group, uh, informing each other. There, uh, and there's also media activism. You know, uh, that famous example we just had was Andrea Mitchell and Secretary Pompeo uh, making not, absurd statements while visiting Poland earlier this year, and we reacted to that. Uh, and I also wrote to our secretary's uh, office and, and pointing out to uh, people and asking them who are, who are their speech writers, right? So uh, people are trained uh, coming out of school, becoming journalists, be becoming legislative staffers who are uh, coming with false history, which needs to be corrected, needs to be challenged. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm here because of uh, my experience um, basically challenging the, uh, and reacting to uh, statements or texts that are appearing in the, in the press. And um, I've observed, I've, I've had uh, very many close observations of the reactions of the staff, of the newspapers, the editors, and, um, and I've seen where we've been successful, um, and I've seen many patterns uh, of uh, uh, distortions that I think we can already kind of predict, um, and we should be we should already have prepared analysis of these false claims and these false statements, and we should be simply pushing to uh, preemptively challenge all these distortions with the same media that repeatedly uh, do it over and over again. Um, what we are facing is definitely censorship. Um, there is absolutely a, um, a glass ceiling for the Polish voice in this matter. Um, I bumped my head on it many times. Many people haven't even gotten there. Um, many people who try, they get burned. Um, I've, I've um, put a lot of thought into this, and I found that there are some weaknesses in regards to the media, and one of the weaknesses of the media is that it pretends to be credible. It needs, it, that's their image. There's a, who, why would somebody want to read a paper that's not credible? Um, and the, the fact of the matter is that the truth is on our side, and a lot of these things that we're fighting are false. Um, and it, it's, it's really, and then there's the other issue, and this is with academia, their weakness is that they're supposed to be about freedom of speech and debate and coming to the truth by debating things and stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, but yet they're engaging in censorship, which is something that they don't want to hear and they don't want anybody around them to see. Um, one of the ways in which we're censored is simply purely we, we, we ask for a letter to be printed, it doesn't get printed. Uh, or we ask for a letter to be printed and then they edit it. So there'll be a long-winded article with numerous, numerous, numerous distortions and somebody in this room sends a letter challenging the, the, the factuality of the distortions and what do they do? They cut it down to three sentences and then they give the author of the article a chance to rebut those three sentences with further distortions. And then that's it, oh no, we, that's it, enough. It's, it's, we're, we're done. What I found very uh, effective is, uh, and, and the, the notion is, is that the people who are doing this, I, I'm not gonna really try to explain, it's not my job to explain why they're doing it. Uh, I just know that they're doing it. 
Um, I know that there, for example, one of the funniest things I saw was there was a letter by Mr. K uh, by the uh, parliamentarian Kavchinsky who was supposed to be here. So he wrote a letter complaining about the fact that uh, some article didn't mention the word Germans uh, in regards to the camps, and he was saying that, you know, Nazi, uh, Nazi Germany, Nazi Germans. And then I saw his, his letter that he posted, and then I saw what actually appeared in the, I believe it was the Guardian, they actually removed the word German from his letter complaining about the fact that they're not using the word German, not German. So he would put German Nazis in his letter, and then they removed German, and then when you call them, they go, well, everyone knows who the Nazis were. Not um, everyone knows. Like, like let's uh, so, finish a little bit here, so, because we, we mm -hmm. don't have an, enough time to, uh, those, to, 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 to have a follow-up for this very interesting uh, notion. But I would like to also ask another question practical, and also one question for each every one of you, because I don't want to be uh, asking individual question, of course, because of the lack of the time. But the issue is very stressing, very important, and we can refer to that, each every one of us personally. The Netflix, uh, the biggest streaming company in the world, recently released the movie The Devil Next Door, the documentary movie uh, about uh, this kind of Ukrainian death camps in uh, Treblinka, the guard of, 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 uh, of the Treblinka that was uh, moving to the United States, then he lived here and he had a huge process in Jerusalem. But in this movie, the Polish uh, map during the Second World War was presented as uh, after the war uh, with the borders and that camps in, uh, in, in, in our country as it was quasi uh, um, democratic or some kind of independent, uh, like after the war the war regime, um, how would you fight with this kind of situation? Because Polish government was involved, Polish internal, internals were involved, journalists, but from your perspective, how would you fight this kind of specific issue? Because we are, I would like to speak about the specific issues. So, uh, shortly, uh, what we are talking, what we are presenting must be correct. It is uh, the main uh, principle. We are not able to avoid such situation because it happens that people are stupid or are, are doing uh, uh, intentionally wrong, as you, as Professor Zamorska uh, mentioned. And here we can only react on such situation, and there was such a reaction to a uh, present time uh, map of uh, Poland. On the other hand, I would like, uh, I have to uh, add something to this uh, uh, question and to the previous question. Uh, so we also should not hesitate to ask ourselves difficult questions to be prepared for difficult questions. Because, for example, uh, soldiers of a national movement were fighting for independence of Poland before the first, uh, Second World War, during the whole Second World War. But uh, we must also answer such a question, why there was no institution of national movement in Zagota? Because such a question is asked, and we must look for an answer, for an explanation, to prepare for discussions. And we must not leave a space uh, not overworked by us. It is our duty also. Thank you. OK. As I have been the one that has been talking longest, I will, be, I will do the shortest uh, reply. Uh, next, net, uh, and it won't, maybe it will be considered Politically, politically not very, uh, not very correct. But Netflix is a, and companies like Netflix that maybe they are doing it by ignorance. I don't think so. I am not so naive uh, when do these things. They only react to one thing: the pocket and the business. They are a private companies. So. Um, what, what more can, can I say? So if, uh, for instance, I do not pay for Netflix. I am not interested in the product that they can show me. 
and they, they, cannot, they can sell me. So if I don't like what they are doing, I simply stop paying. So the boycott is your uh, answer. Yes. Um, sh short answer to um, the film. Uh, the response from the gov Polish government was important because I heard about it here. My brother uh, told me, oh, did you hear about that? So that, that got reproduced in the media, and that's very important. Um, as far as um, proactively, I, I just want to comment that, um, that we can all build a base of knowledge by using our communities, our libraries. I sneak in Poli history of World War II into my syllabi in literature. I teach Eva Hoffman, who was mentioned here. She wrote a great biography, Lost in Translation. She ended up leaving, she was a child immigrant uh, of Jewish heritage. Who, uh, her mother was pregnant with her in 45. She grew up in Krakow and later moved to Canada and she became an editor of New York Times and she was culturally Polish. Uh, she was so distressed by not being the right, right kind of Jewish in America that she moved to London. And um, her kind of books should be um, um, promoted and read. Let's go to our libraries. We'll prepare a list, I have a list, we'll put it on a website, of the books that Americans uh, or people in our community should be reading that are informative, uh, have discussion groups uh, in our communities. So it should be reacted to on every level. And um, Professor Kabinski, who's not here today, he's doing a wonderful project on the level of the academia. He's doing proactive uh, set, um, editing of books. He's been doing this in Poland for years, and now he's being supported by the Fundacja Narodowa. It's called Recovering Forgotten History, and scripts of books are being distributed among uh, academics uh, uh, who are uh, preparing to publish. They get together, they, they, get, get, they read the scripts, they get together for two weeks uh, every summer, and they critique and share. So stupidity doesn't get published, an intentional bias doesn't get into books. And those kinds of projects on every level are needed because we have to catch up. There are two tracks that we are dealing with. One, Poland and its history got left behind. In the meantime, people are speak have been speaking about us uh, in incorrect way, in, and in a way that's ethnocentric and biased, and we need to address the errors and the entrenched bias that's in the historical narrative. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Stefan Komar. Right. How would you respond to that? All right, basically what I didn't get to finish um, was that um, being that there are these weaknesses, um, we need to get our voice heard. People need to hear all the things that were said today, and, on, and to do that, we have to overcome the censorship. The way we overcome the censorship is by reaching out to public opinion in every which way possible that we can. Thank God we have social media now, but now there are attempts now to silence people in social media. Now the reason is people, in my opinion who don't like what we have to say, which should not be offensive to anybody, um, don't want this to be heard, and we need to overcome that. Um, and we need to work together and do a little bit more and do it preemptively and do it systematically and not just in reaction. Because this has been going on for too long and we need historians from Poland to be available to us, uh, to be able to actually be able to present the facts. Uh, they need to be able to present the facts. They need to be coming here more often. Um, uh, you know, I went to, uh, there's so many projects, but we have to do something. So I'm gonna just mention one thing. So I went to the library one day and I took a book about uh, World War II history slash the Holocaust. And then in it, it says, um, Hitler didn't put the concentration, and this is a book that's addressed to, to students, like probably maybe, you know, middle, middle school, or even maybe upper elementary school, 
And it says, Hitler put the camps, the concentration camps in Poland because he knew the Germans would not, would oppose them. But the Poles, due to their history of anti-Semitism, would not object, all right? So this is out there. How many more books are out there? Are we gonna do a campaign to now go into every library? There is supposedly an organization that's doing that. It can be done you know, to a, to a certain extent, but it, it does require a little bit of money, maybe to at least help the volunteers who are willing to do that. There's people willing to do that, but they have other things to do. They have bills to pay, stuff like that. But I mean, this is one project that could be done. This book is in there for I don't know how many years. And believe it or not, there was a, it was word for word. There was a big uproar a few years prior to me discovering this book in the New Jersey Board of Education website, some student made, wrote an essay and he a actually had that word for word. <coughs> and there was a big uproar. How dare the uh, New Jersey Board of Education uh, you know, put this on their website? Well, they, somebody was supposed to look into it from, and I don't wanna like, blame anybody, from the uh, consulate. Um, I don't think they did anything about it because they, they never found that textbook where that kid got it from. More, more than likely got it because it was word for word. Um, now, and I'm not gonna blame the, the consulate, all right? If they're gonna be involved in this stuff, they have to have people who are, that's all they do. That's all they do. They just deal with this issue because it's a, it's a pressing issue. It's important. And they should be uh, committing uh, the time, the energy, and the funding to do this in a respectful manner, not to push, uh, to, 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 to uphold the good name of Poland, which I don't think that, that, we, that, that, that slogan should have ever been used. It's not, that's not the issue. The issue is to, to reach the truth, not, uh, because if you say, oh, I wanna uphold the good name of Poland, that could also mean, well, we're gonna hide the bad stuff, and that's what, how it's being taken, and that's how it's being criticized. Quite, quite, uh, and, and I, I get that, you know. But we op we opened ourselves with these uh, slogans instead of just saying, "No, we want to see the truth. Yeah. We need to be able to present the truth, and we have to be able to discuss what we, our observations, our, uh, you know, what we've experienced, what we've heard, and be able to do it without being uh, labeled uh, and shouted down and censored." Um, but we, you know, we need to coordinate with Poland. With, with the historians who are going to actually respond to us or, or you know, get out there themselves and start talking. Thank you very much. I, I, yeah, I, I just would like to say this. I would love to be able to continue this panel discussion, but the fact is that I've been told that we are, uh, there's another organization picking up this room. So Mr. Shlebovsky, wherever you are, um, could you please come and make your final statements? Uh, thank the panel. I know, obviously, not enough time to cover this very deep issue. Let's give him a hand. And uh, Mr. Marek and Mr. Slavoski, please come to the podium. And uh, thank you very much for this wonderful two and a half days. It looks like we have to interrupt in a very important, uh, very important on a very important subject and. Obviously, we, have, we are just scratching the surface of the problem, but unfortunately, that's, uh, that's the time constraints which we have. Um, so, uh, I just want to announce two things. First, uh, I want to remind you that uh, today, we have uh, all participants of our conference are invited to the premiere, world premiere of the uh, opera, uh, Tri Paderewskis, which, are, which is going to take place at the uh, uh, John F. Kennedy uh, Center here in Washington. So if anybody is having plans to do that, please come to me. I will inform you how to get, uh, how to get there and get tickets. Um, second announcement is um, um, basically, basically I would like to, uh, to thank you, uh, to thank those of us who are working with the committee um, I haven't mentioned yesterday Krystyna Zamorska, who was uh, with us uh, 
for the last half a year working on this conference, and also Mr. Uh, Arthur, uh, uh, who came from us, uh, Mr. Arthur Zisk, who came to us from London. Uh, um, he was he was not visible, but he, he is the author of the website, and he was working along with us. Without his uh, uh, participation and contribution, uh, nothing would be possible. Um, Arthur, maybe you can come up here and show your face. Uh, why not? You see, he's, he's always very busy. You see, this, this, kind, this kind of unpretentious uh, but very dedicated people are making these things possible. Um, I would like uh, to our uh, chairman, uh, Marek Bozejak, to say a few words at the end. We don't have much time left, so I would like to thank you again for joining us here at the National Press Club. I hope that uh, this first project of the iPoland Group will serve as a starting point for future projects. I'd like to mention, for instance, that uh, we would like to work on a project uh, which will focus on the recognition of the former U.S. Ambassador to Poland, Arthur Bliss Lane. Uh, between 44 and 47, uh, he resigned from his post after allies betrayed Poland, allowed the uh, elections to be falsified, and uh, he fought for Poland uh, being in the United States. He was ambassador of Poland in the United States, fighting for the truth of Katyn. Uh, he was crucial in, in the creation of the Madden Commission in the um, House of the Representatives, so this person um, really deserves recognition. Uh, we prepared a petition to the office of the Polish president to award this person, but we have also other projects uh, uh, which uh, have to do with, uh, with police line. We'll also think about other projects. You are all invited uh, to support ideas. Please come to us, send us your feedback. Maybe we'll uh, have a possibility to cooperate together in the future, be it film production, be it a publication, or another conference, another event. Uh, a very important subject is the um, historical narrative in computer games. Uh, I liked very much the presentation of uh, Mr. Makovsky. I hope you like it too. So uh, perhaps you will organize another conference on this subject. Uh, but there are also other topics of interest. So if you have any ideas, please come to us. Thank you again very much. This concludes our conference. Thank you for your participation.